welcome Team Rhino. We are in full swing here with our day of events to celebrate Cinco de Rhino, and we're glad you're here with us. We're raising critical funds for Rangers, and with your help, um, that emergency funding will go to support salaries and health and safety needs for the dedicated men and women who continue to ensure that rhinos and other endangered species will survive. You can make a gift today and it will be matched on our website at rhinos.org or on Facebook. We hope you enjoyed our first two talks this morning and now it's time for a special live reading of the book, One Special Rhino. It's about the birth of Undatu, and I just got word that Undatu is, is watching this broadcast live. He's a lot bigger than when this book was written. Uh, and it was written and illustrated by the students at the PS107 John W. Kimball Learning Center in Brooklyn, New York. Proceeds from the book are donated to IRF, and we're very thankful for that. The book is also available in our Rhino shop at shop.rhinos.org. My special guests today are Ken Levinson and his daughter, Isabel, and Cece Seifert, and she's joined by her daughter, Poppy. Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining in the Cinco de Rhino Fun. Thank Ken, you. Great, can thanks. we get thanks started here? Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for everybody to join us. I'm really excited to, to read this book. But I wanted to get started maybe talking to Ken here about um, how did this project get started? Yeah, it, it started in 2012 when um, my wife, Catherine, uh, heard about Cinco de Rhino. And she set out at the school at PS 107 with our daughter, Isabel, who was in kindergarten at that point, or preschool. Um, she, uh, uh, to do fundraising for Cinco de Rhino. And they, they were out on the sidewalk in front of the school and raised $500. Um, and there was such a great response that out of that initial fundraising, they started the uh, Beast Relief Committee in the PTA and uh, really dedicated to big animals and set out uh, to, um, to raise awareness with the kids. And, and, and out of that came the idea of writing a book uh, about a big animal. And, uh, and Datu was the first feature. Great. Uh, it's wonderful. And the kids are, they're always so inspiring when we tell this, this story about how this book started. So we're, we're thankful for the, the PTA members that um, took it to this level and, and for all the involvement from, from students throughout the years now, uh, raising money on this particular day. And the schools are closed in, in, in New York. That's correct, right? Yes. And, and so they, they didn't get the opportunity to do what they normally do and collect change um, to support the International Rhino Foundation today. But we're happy to have them instead participate in our virtual Cinco de Rhino campaign. So they're still actively um, uh, supporting IRF on a regular basis. So thank you so much, Ken, and, and everyone else that's involved with this project. I'm going to pull the book up here. And I wonder, um, Ken, if um, you would read a very special forward by a legend in wildlife conservation. Yes, we're uh, definitely honored to have the forward written by Dr. Jane Goodall. And um, I'll begin here. I have always loved rhinos since I first went to Africa in 1960 and met a young male, Billy, who had been rescued and raised on a farm after his mother had been shot. He was quite happy for me to sit on his back while he wandered around feeding. In those days, there were probably as many as a half a million rhinos in Africa and parts of Asia. The black rhino and the white rhino lived in Africa. In Asia, there were three different species. Today, all species of rhinos are highly endangered. What has happened? Unfortunately, poaching has hugely increased by 700% in just the past seven years. This is because in some parts of Asia, people have the false belief that the rhino's horn has medicinal or other magic properties. And so poachers go to all sorts of lengths to kill rhinos and cut out the horns. Even very young ones are killed so that the poachers can make a bit more money from their tiny horns just beginning to grow. And because they make a lot of money per pound of horn, the poachers take great risks they even fly into some of the big African parks in helicopters, shoot a rhino, steal the horn, 
and fly out. This book is about a young Sumatran rhino called Undatu. This species is critically endangered. At the very moment, there are only 200 remaining in the wild. And if we don't help them, the species will disappear altogether. The rhinos need champions. And fortunately, there are dedicated individuals fighting to save them. There are the brave anti-poaching teams on the ground and the game rangers who are there to protect the animals in the national parks and reserves. There are captive breeding programs in zoos in many countries, and there are organizations that are raising awareness and money. But there are no better champions than today's students. They are, they are more aware of the need to protect wildlife than ever before and will be our up and coming conservationists and wildlife biologists. And they can play a vital role in assuring rhino survival. One thing is for sure, if we don't work together now, the children of the future will know rhinos only from photographs in books and old films. We must not let that happen. The children of PS 107 in Brooklyn have made an important contribution to rhino survival by writing this book. For one thing, Andato's poignant story will engage the hearts and minds of other school children, many of whom will, I'm sure, want to help conservation efforts. Moreover, all proceeds from the book go directly to support the remaining Sumatran rhinos through the work of the International Rhino Foundation. Well done, fifth graders of PS 107, and congratulations, Dr. Jane Goodall. Thank you, Ken. And uh, Isabel, would you get us started reading the book? Or I'm sorry, Cece. We're going to go to Cece <laughs> first. Cece, will That's you get okay. us started uh, reading the book? Absolutely. So the first page, here we go. He says, hi, my name is Andatu. I'm a Sumatran rhino. I'm covered with a light layer of hair. Out of the five different species of rhino, we are the only ones with hair all over our body. Cool, huh? We are also the smallest. I don't have much of a horn yet, but in a few years, I will in a few years, you see, rhinos are born without a horn, but as we grow, our horn grows with us. My mom's name is Ratu, and my dad's is Andalas. My name is my parents combined. Think about it. Andalas plus Ratu equals Andatu. It only took me a year to figure that one out. Smart, huh? Andatu, I like the ring of it. In the local language, it means gift from God. I live in a place called the Y Combus Rhino Sanctuary, which supports us rhinos so that we are happy and good to go. Five of us live at my place. Me, my mama Ratu, my daddy Andalas, and two others, Rosa and Bina. When my mom gave birth to me, I symbolized the hope of new Sumatrans. I was called the miracle baby. Rhino babies are born a, a Rhino babies are born a lot in places like Africa and India, but I was the first Sumatran rhino to ever be born in captivity in Indonesia. That makes me one special rhino. Like all special rhinos, I and the other Sumatrans are in trouble. We are critically endangered. There are only 100 to 200 of us in the world. Sadly, we are being killed by people. Shocking, right? When there are so few of us, it's hard to find friends to play with. This is sad to me. So I'm here to tell you about my life and ask for your help. My mom was born in the wild. When she was little, some people mistook her for a large pig and tried to kill her. Ouch, that must have hurt her heart. My mommy left them in the dust. Park rangers rescued her and put her in the rhino sanctuary. The Cincinnati Zoo, which is very far away from here, is where my daddy was born and grew up. My parents, Ipu and Emmy, were taken in there to save my species. My grandma got pregnant five times, but none of them ever made it until daddy. He was the first Sumatran rhino born in 112 years, at least in captivity. Everyone was thrilled. My father, Andalas, was small, the size of a doggy when he was born. He didn't have a horn either, but he was happy. 
He loved to snuggle with my grandmother, Emmy. He nursed every hour and put on two and a half pounds a day. Sometimes I try to act like him and see what being that big must feel like. My daddy had many friends at the zoo. In 2009, they moved him to Indonesia. He was brave to go on the journey where he met my mom. They fell in love. Then I was born. On June 23rd, 2012, I entered the world with a thump. A three foot drop down to earth didn't phase me at all. It was nighttime. Bright lights from flashlights blinded me as I slowly opened my eyes to the world. Well, a small part of it. Thank you, Cece. Isabel, can you continue the story for us now? I gazed around this mysterious place. A huge hairy thing towered above me. Who's that? I whispered, my eyes wide open. On Dotu, that's your mom, a voice said. My mom nudged me with her horn, as if to say, go on. Slowly, I took a step. Ever since birth, I loved to eat. Eat, eat, eat. I nursed from my mom every day. I ate delicious leaves from the jungle, sweet potato, just about anything. I ate so much. In a year, I went from 60 pounds at birth to over 900 pounds. I enjoy wallowing almost as much as I love eating. My baths are what I enjoy most. The feeling of that rich, gooey, lovely filth all over me. I also enjoy water. Sitting, splashing, bathing. When the sun is angry, it beats like flames on my back. Luckily, the fresh tropical trees guard me from the sun harm. When there's animal watching, there are owls who are awake at night and make noises. When I am trying to go to sleep, I see snakes slithering around the sanctuary, spiders bouncing, ants marching, birds flying, monkeys howling, and of course, people. Since I'm around them so often, I'm not scared and don't mind if they try to touch me. Three keepers named Gokek, Giano, and Iswantu keep me and my mom clean and healthy. They feed me, wash me, inspect my feet, and weigh me. Dr. D. D. Kendra is the veterinarian for all of us rhinos. He's a rhino expert and decides what foods we will eat. If I'm sick, he gives me medicine. There's one thing I'm scared of though. It's called the poacher. People who shoot rhinos for our horns. I know, right? Who would do such a thing? Well, some people think that rhino horn cures cancer, but really it doesn't. Our horns are made from the same thing you humans ha have called fingernails and hair. So if they want to cure themselves that way, they should have just bit their nails and eat their hair. Why kill us for the same thing? Many of my relatives have been killed and I'm tired and upset about that. There are very few of us left. We Sumatrans are related to woolly mammoths and they're extinct. We do not want to end up like them. My mom says she once saw some poachers. As I heard the story, I spun around and around looking for any. Thankfully, many caring wildlife conservations have been taking us in and nurturing us safe from poachers. I'm grateful for that. Rhino protection units are there to make sure no poachers are lurking around. They specialize in unhinging traps and snares. They take shifts about 15 days per month to monitor the area. My mom says they will help us stay out of trouble. Today, my eyes are filled with surprise. A cake made out of grain was before me. Banana co coated it, berries decorated it, and leaves surrounded the amazing structure. Happy birthday on dot two, my keeper said. I licked the cake and snarled bits of berries into my mouth. I was making a mess. But I didn't care. It was my birthday. 
As I gobbled it up, my mama stood next to me. Her eyes were shining. I love my mom because she has stayed with me all the time. I like watching the sun go down. It winds down the day like I am winding down my story. Now it is time to help me, mom, dad, and every other rhino that's in danger. You can help by celebrating Cinco de Rhino, bowling for rhinos, or you can even adopt a rhino like me. In the end, I want our population to go up. I want more friends. I hope that I can be a superhero rhino who helps rhinos around the world. Be super on Dato to the rhino rescue. Thanks for listening. Thank, thank you so much, Isabel. That was wonderful. Thank you so much uh, to you and Cece for reading this wonderful story. Uh, we love it here at IRF and we can't get enough of it. Um, we hope you enjoyed this heartwarming story. And uh, Cece and, and Ken, could you share with us maybe a little bit of what this story means to you? Well, I could start off. Um, so I work at IRF, and so rhinos are my life. I love rhinos, and I've been very, very lucky, and I've had a chance to meet Andatu and Andalas and Ratu and Bina and Rosa, and now we have even more rhinos at the sanctuary. We also have Harapan, who is Andatu's, Andalas's brother, and we have Delilah, who is Andatu's little sister, and so I've been able to meet the incredible men and women who work at the Sumatran Rhino Sanctuary, and they are so incredibly dedicated. And right now with the virus, they're not going home to their families. They're staying with the rhinos. They're all wearing masks like we all do, and they're staying healthy and taking care of those sweet rhinos to make sure they're okay and to make sure they're safe from poachers. So it's exciting to read this book, and it's, it's exciting to know that there are such incredible kids at PS 107 who made this amazing book and who are so dedicated and then they have amazing lemonade stands every year for Cinco de Rhino and we're so grateful for your incredible support. You all are really an inspiring team and it's really fun even though we're separate now. We live down in Virginia and you guys are up in Brooklyn but we still get to read this, this book together and find a way, despite the virus, to celebrate Cinco de Rhino together. So I'm just grateful to you, Izzy, and your amazing parents and all their support and all of your friends at PS 107. And Thank Izzy, you. I, I got a special message for you from uh, Andatu on Facebook. He says, hi. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, I mean, we we're honored to, to take uh, – to take part in this, that the kids, it's so amazing. I mean, I would say the Ndatu story really it, uh, shows the preciousness of life, of course, and, and the special individual animals that can make such a difference in, not, um, in their species, of course, but in, in how it shows people around the world can help and be involved, and it takes all of our participation, and that the kids um, really can put their heart and soul into it. The, the kids that worked on this book, they workshopped it over the course of a semester and did the illustrations and the writing around it while learning, learning um, uh, about rhinos. Um, you know, they're in high school now and they remember this like it's the greatest thing uh, forever. And just, I think it really changes the kids' lives and their perspectives going through going through the process. Well, I hope uh, uh, if you can um, let those students know as well that their book is, is uh, a lasting legacy um, and is still enjoyed today <laughs> um, as we enjoyed it um, just now. So thank you to, to uh, Ken Levinson and his daughter Isabel, wonderful job, and Cece Seaford and Poppy for joining us as well. And uh, thank you so much for the support of the students in the PTA. You're making such a difference for the critically endangered Sumatran rhino. Again, you can pick up your co own copy of One Special Rhino at shop.rhinos.org. We hope you're gearing up for a Cinco de Rhino virtual happy hour. Still a few hours to get one together. The toolkit is at rhinos.org. Gather your friends and family for a virtual party and raise some emergency funds for rhino protection. You can make donations and they will be matched all day at rhinos.org 
or on Facebook as well. I'll be back at 3 p.m. to talk rhinos with Joe Hauser. He's the assistant curator at the Buffalo Zoo. We'll see you then. <laughs>